What is a computer algebra system and why should we use one? A computer algebra system is computer software that will perform most of the mathematics that we teach from middle school up through calculus, but it does it symbolically, not just numerically. Other computer algebra systems include Maple, Mathematica, Wolfram Alpha, Derive. Derive is the CAS that is on the TI Inspire CX CAS, TI 89, and TI 92. Uses of CAS include doing algebraic calculations that can't be done by hand but would be very difficult to do by hand. Another use of CAS is as an assistant to learning and discovering mathematics, pre algebra, algebra up through calculus, grades 7 through 12 and beyond. This is the focus, this is the aspect we'll focus on. Math Practice 5 that says use appropriate tools strategically says mathematically proficient students consider the available tools when solving a mathematical problem. These tools might include a computer algebra system, among other things. Let's look at how CAS can be used to help students discover algebraic properties and understand them. Here is a worksheet or GIF that I've used in my classroom to help students investigate the patterns for exponents on variables. Students are asked to type in the exercise into their CAS and then write the answer. And as they do it, look for patterns. And notice we're talking about multiplying and adding. For the sake of time, I typed these in already, and you can see that sometimes you, the expression is simplified and sometimes it can't be. And students are hopefully learning when they can and when they cannot. Here's an example of introducing coefficients other than 1. Some of the things I've found by using CAS is that it helps students create their own learning. It's self-paced and usually faster than a traditional setting. It addresses common errors head on and hopefully eliminates them before they even begin. And combine more concepts together with actually, with, which actually lessens confusion. In this case, we did adding and multiplying at the same time. Here's an example of homework or opportunities to learn as I call them. Here your student is asked to write their answer by hand then type it in and see what the CAS answer is and then see if they're correct or not. And that way students can check immediately if they're doing things correctly and they don't build up uh, negative reinforcement. So when students are doing their homework it's like having a teacher sitting next to them but without the embarrassment. What if the students use the CAS just to write the answers? Not going to be able to stop that when students cheat. Still can't do that. Please note that our students use CAS only for discovery and checking homework, never ever for assessments. I have a few more examples, but I thought I would stop and let you be aware that there is an International Computer Algebra System Conference being held in Cleveland this July. For more information, this is the website, bit.ly forward slash CAS in Cleveland. Now let's look at an example of how CAS can be used to assist students learning how to solve linear equations like this one. Let's first look at how this is done correctly. We want to solve this equation for x. There are several paths you could use here. Uh, I think what I'm going to do first is subtract 10x. So I'm going to type, type minus 10x. And you'll notice it's saying take the last answer, which is this equation, and subtract 10, 8, 10x from each side. This is the, calculus, the calculator's um, way of showing that. This is the result. Then the student would say, well, maybe I'll add 5 next. And the idea is for the student to be doing this on paper and pencil and then doing it here to see if they agree. And then finally, we'll divide both sides by negative 7.
Now again, the plan is for the student to do it on paper each step and then check it with the computer algebra system. This time we're going to make some mistakes that sometimes happen. Oftentimes students will say, okay, I want to um, subtract 10x from both sides. So we'll go ahead and do that, subtract the 10x. That, that would be correct. But then they might want to subtract 5 to get rid of that 5. So they'll say, OK, subtract 5. And that is a perfect legally, perfectly legal transformation. It just doesn't produce what we want. And most of the time they'll say, oh, that's right, I need to add 5. So they can either proceed from here or proceed from here. So I'm going to go ahead and add 10, just proceed from our new equation. And then there, you know you've seen some students who want to add 7 to both sides to get rid of the so-called get rid of the negative 7 and they get this and again this catches their mistakes again without embarrassment and usually gives them a chance to make the correction. So this is one of, one of the really good ways to talk about how to solve linear equations. Let them make mistakes but let them learn how to, let them learn from their mistakes. Let's look at how you would find the distance from the point to the line only we're going to derive the formula for that. First, we'd find the slope of this line, which is uh, the opposite of A over B. The perpendicular then would be B over A. The equation of the line through X1, Y1 with that slope would be this in point slope form. So we're going to find the perpendicular line to that, and we need to find the point of intersection with that. To do so, we need to solve this system, which we could do by hand, but it would be kind of messy. So this is where we're going to bring in the computer algebra system. How I did it was I took the first equation and stored it into E1. Took the second equation and stored it into E2. And then asked the CAS to solve the, the linear system E1, E2 in terms of X and Y. And this is what we get for X and this is what we get for Y, which was I'm sure what you thought we would get. So I stored this X coordinated in for X S for X solution, the Y coordinated in for Y S for Y solution. And I found this point of intersection where the perpendicular met here. So I want to find the distance, and I'm going to use the distance formula. So I want to find the distance between this, what I called X S and Y S, which were those nasty, nasty looking expressions, and Y1, X1, Y1. And to do that, I took the square root of that quantity squared plus this quantity squared. And it came out to be, surprise, surprise, the answer. The absolute value of AX1 plus BY1 minus C all over the square root of A squared plus B squared. Notice that the students used the logic and the thinking. They just didn't do all the nasty algebra. They did the problem solving. The last example to illustrate how to use CAS is... Uh, at Exeter Academy, Ian Winokur gave me this problem. Here we have a, a square with the diagonals drawn, and we put in what I call the midpoints of the uh, half diagonals. And then we connect vertices to those uh, midpoints, and we create a figure, here this red figure, and, and we want to know what is that figure and what is the ratio of the area of the red figure to the area of the blue square. That's the problem. Well, it looks like it's a square. And we need to prove that. And then we want to find the ratios of the areas. So since I, this is a dynamic geometry software, I found the area of the red figure, the area of the blue figure, and then I divided those. And the ratio turned out to be 0.4 or two-fifths, and I pulled them and changed all the shapes, and no matter what happens, the ratio of the area was two to five. So now what I'd like to do is prove that, prove this is a square, and that this is the ratio of the areas all the time. I decided to use a coordinate proof, so I called the vertices of the blue square these values in terms of A, and then I had to find the coordinates of A, B, C, and D in terms of A. And the plan was to find the equations of these lines here that make up those four sides, those four red sides. So 
So I found the equations of those in terms of A and then solved each linear system in terms of A and, and, and noted that like the BX coordinate, the BY coordinate, and so on, the CX coordinate, the CY coordinate, and so on. I then used the distance formula to find the length of each of those sides and it turned out always to be 12 absolute A radical 10 all over 5. So it told me it was equilateral. I then used the cast to find the slopes of all four sides and it, it turns out that they were opposites and the consecutive sides were opposites and reciprocals of each other. So they were perpendicular. So it turns out we have a square Here's the area of the inside square, the area of the outside square. Take their ratios and you get 2 to 5, a bona fide proof. Using CAS to do the nasty stuff, but you still, the student had to do the logic, the thinking, the problem solving. There are so many other uses of CAS and how to use, help students learn and teach in grades 7 through 12. And to see those, you can come to this international conference in Cleveland. Here's the website. And before we close, I'll give you a list, a real quick list of the outstanding speakers that we have from all over the world. From the University of Chicago, Zalman Yusiskin is going to be our keynote speaker. But you can see we have people from Australia, Canada, Scotland. Let me scoot it down here a little bit. Penn State. all over the country, all over the world. And uh, we're hoping that you can join us. You can contact me if you have uh, any, any questions, tom at tomreardon.com. Thank you for watching and we hope this was helpful for you.